Hey everybody, Emma here. Do you have a sweet tooth? Because I definitely do. Today, we're going to learn about how the body deals with all that glucose. Glucose is essential for our cells. The mitochondria in our cells use it to respire. This releases energy for essential functions like keeping warm, moving, and building larger molecules. If we don't have enough glucose, our cells won't be able to respire. If we have too much glucose, it can damage organs like our eyes and our kidneys. We need to keep blood glucose levels within a small range. Let's look at what happens when we eat a meal. This bowl of spaghetti contains carbohydrates. These are broken down by the enzyme amylase in our digestive system to make lots of glucose. This glucose will then travel in our bloodstream. The organ that detects any change in glucose is this one, the pancreas. If the blood glucose levels are too high, it will release a hormone called insulin, which also then travels in the bloodstream. It allows glucose to move out of the blood and into our cells, where it is used for respiration. If there is excess glucose that is not used, it is stored as glycogen in both the liver and the muscles. This glycogen is insoluble, which means it doesn't dissolve, so it can be stored. This restores the blood glucose levels back to normal. And when the blood glucose levels are low, the glycogen can be turned back into glucose. If you're studying higher tier, watch on to find more about this. If you are studying foundation tier, just skip ahead to the questions. Okay, let's look at what happens when blood glucose levels drop. This could happen due to exercise, because your cells are aspiring faster, using up more glucose. So let's imagine we have less glucose in the blood. It is still going to be the pancreas that detects the fall in the blood glucose levels. But this time, it produces a different hormone. We'll use blue to illustrate it. And this is called glucagon. Again, glucagon travels in the blood but it travels to the liver, that's its target organ. And here, it turns the stored glycogen back into glucose. This is then released back into the blood, increasing the blood glucose levels back to normal. All right, it's important that you learn these spellings, glucose, glycogen, and glucagon. It's really important to make sure you've got them clear in your head because if you spell them wrong or mix them up, you're gonna lose the marks. One way to remember what glucagon does is realizing that sounds like glucose gone. So it is a hormone produced when glucose is gone from the blood, or at least it's in lower levels. All right, let's see what you've understood. Pause, answer the questions in your head or on some scrap paper, then press play when you're done. So which organ monitors blood glucose levels? This is the pancreas. Describe how blood glucose levels may increase. Eating food that contains glucose or carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are broken down into glucose by amylase. Explain how the body responds when blood glucose levels increase. Okay, so the pancreas detects the increase in blood glucose levels and then releases insulin. This travels in the blood to the cells, causing them to take in glucose. Excess glucose is stored as glycogen in the muscles and liver. Okay, this question is for higher tier only. Explain the function of the hormone glucagon in the body. So your answer should start by stating what the function of glucagon actually is and then go on to explain how it achieves this. So let's start with the function. Glucagon is released when blood glucose levels drop and its function is to increase the levels back to normal. Now the explanation. It does this by causing the liver to convert glycogen into glucose, which is then released into the blood. All right, how did you do? What if your body can't control its blood glucose levels? This is called diabetes and you can learn about it here. And if you find this useful, please subscribe. Thanks and bye!